welcome to Outlaw Gamer Radio, the official podcast of OutlawGamers.com. This is the show where we live to play and play to live. I am Bryn Adams, joined by a man who is also prepared to give you a handheld experience right now. And the full-on encounter later, it's Mr. Lauren Baumgarten. Lauren! <laughs> What's up, Brent Adams? Not too much. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. And Ed, that is that could not be more true, what you just said. Yes, I know. I am prepared to do both of those things. Yes, as is Nintendo, as we'll talk about shortly. Yes. Uh, but before we talk about Nintendo, we got to talk about VR. The because... Denver Broncos! <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's right. My team is going to the Super Bowl. I'm kind of disappointed that the Patriots aren't going to make it this year. You know? Let me tell you. Let me tell you how disappointed I was to be in New England <laughs> while the Broncos were beating the Patriots. <laughs> I bet the people the people I work with just did not just were not happy about it. No, I bet they weren't. But uh, I, I was I was kind of actually looking forward to the uh, to the uh, the Manning Brady uh, face off one last time. Well, I mean, we presume, but I don't think anybody really expects Manning's going to be coming back after this season. Uh, yes, and I, I'm pleased to say that Manning came out on top of that. Uh, no, and he's not going to be coming back. Yeah. But, uh, yes, very happy that the, my Broncos beat the New England Patriots and are heading to the Super Bowl against, I don't know, this little this team, Carolina, somebody or other. Who, they're who, not who really, cares? Who cares? They're Honestly. not. It's not It's not like they were 15-1 and one or anything this year. <laughs> uh, we have the number one defense. They finished off 15-1. and one. Uh, The Carolina Panthers are the favorite in the Super Bowl, but it's exciting to when your when your team goes, so it'll be it'll be a good time. Well, fingers crossed for the Broncos. Yes. Um which is ironic because I hated Peyton Manning when he played for, for the Vols. <laughs> for, I, I, I expect I expect uh, every listener of this show, save those of you that actually live in Carolina, to be rooting for the Denver Broncos. That's right. That's exactly right. Okay, so uh basically we have an announcement to make. It's now a football podcast. It's uh, not- <laughs> So no, that's my worst nightmare. I want a hockey podcast. <laughs> listen, Lauren, nobody watches that sport. I don't know why you think anybody would listen to the fucking podcast about that sport. Everybody watches hockey. Okay, so something else everybody does is they listen to you and I talk about VR week in and week out. And this <laughs> final edition of OGR as a weekly podcast is going to be no exception. That's right. Uh, so we've got a, a trio of stories here. That uh, that will relate to VR, and we're just gonna we'll we'll talk about all of these kind of as one because uh, essentially none of them is all that groundbreaking to deserve to deserve a spot on its own. <laughs> but uh, we've it is you know this it could turn into a damn VR podcast that could happen. Uh, I would I would argue that it has. Uh, we have a a story here talking about the HTC Vive and how it might be soft launching as opposed to a full on. A full-on consumer release, a la the Oculus Rift and and the the finalized consumer version of the Rift that was shown off at CES, and which uh, is now uh, is now available to uh, to pre-order. The HTC Vive may do something somewhat similar to like what Oculus did with the DK2, in that what they have now is is good, but it's not you know it's it's a little rough around the edges. It's it's a development piece of hardware, but they may sell it to the public. Uh, because obviously they've had a pretty they've had a pretty big delay from where they originally wanted to be. Of course, you know they were talking about having their developer thing out like last year, and they were going to launch first, and none of it's happened. So um, this uh, this might be a way to kind of get people excited about uh, the uh, the HTC Vive and what uh, what HTC and Valve have been working on with the with this unit. So the Vive Pre, they're they're kind of equivalent to like the DK two. Uh, that's expected. Uh, well, I don't know. It, it's just speculation at this point. But word behind the scenes is that uh, they might soft launch the Vive Pre, and that uh, that'll be available to consumers. Uh, Lauren, yeah, there's so there's what, actually. What do you think? So do you this think is, that's likely. Do you think it's a good idea? Well, there's a lot of weirdness around the whole the Vive right now. So uh, yeah. we know that they're going to be announcing their price officially on February 29th, at which point we assume they will be announcing hardware specs. Since the time this article was posted. Um, Representative of Vive came out and said they're not going to be releasing the DK, the pre, um, which is the, which is the version they showed off at CES. Yeah. But and so, the, but uh, th- what they're releasing is 
fairly is, is pretty similar to the pre. Mm. There's also talk, and they have, as far as I know, they have not uh, denied this yet. Um, but it's still just a rumor. There's talk that they may only re- be releasing a limited number in April. Um, you know, Oculus started ramping up production. The first official uh, consumer version of the Oculus Rift came off the line in September. So they've been putting these together since September. And within hours, they sold out of their stock for the first month to two months uh, of their shipping date. And they're now shipping initially. The, the original shipping is going to happen on March 28th. If you go to order an Oculus Rift right now, it's going to ship in July, the last I looked. So, and they've been making these things since September. Now, I, HTC has a, a lot different relationship with supply channels because they've been makers of uh, consumer electronics for quite some time. But um, it, it's really kind of weird and fuzzy around this whole thing, Brent. So they might, they might, the re- it sounds like they're going to be releasing something that's, and they're also releasing this Vive Pre. I mean, they just released the actual Vive Pre and started sending it to developers like at CES right. or shortly thereafter. So that's like in mid January, they started sending out the Vive Pre. And come April, they're shipping out another, the consumer version, which it sounds like is going to be a slightly modified version of the Vive Pre. We don't know how many they're going to be shipping. I've heard people throw around numbers like only 7,000 type yeah, thing. Yeah. Um, we don't, we're really unclear. We don't know. I think, we just don't know. Yeah. So February 28th or 29th, excuse me, we will get, I think, uh, I'm assuming we will get more information on that. We will certainly get the price um, and, and we'll know more about it. So um, there, there are a couple other sort of bigger th- things also going on in the VR space, Brent, that, that we have here on the docket. Um, yeah, some one, hiring. One of, uh, yeah, one of the, so in the last sort of week or 10 days, there's been lots of rumblings about other companies making movements in the VR space and a couple of really big ones. Uh, including uh, Google, uh, who we know obviously makes uh, Google Cardboard right now, which is that twenty dollars sort of uh, really super low end VR experience you can do with your head with your cell phone. But uh, they have started doing uh, posting some job postings that to indicate, and there have been made some other moves to indicate that it looks like Google is ready to get into the VR space in a much much bigger way. Yeah. So they um, they are not the only ones, as it turns out. Uh, because obviously uh, one of Google's biggest competitors is Apple, and uh, there was a story going around the Financial Times was reporting that Apple has hired uh, a VR expert named uh, Doug Bowman, who has a, a pretty impressive resume and uh, has been has been working on VR and things related to VR for some time now. And uh, it's 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 unknown uh, what exactly he might be doing. At Apple, but uh, Apple has a number of patents, and there have been there have been uh, consistent rumors over the years that Apple is in fact interested in VR and uh, and uh, maybe trying to you know see how they they could uh, get into that uh, that technology as well. So it's interesting, man. It's 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 really interesting to you know to have kind of been following this as long as we have, and to kind of see how. Um, you know, see how it is. Uh, it is beginning to shake out as we make it into the the year of VR that uh, that everybody thinks 2016 is going to be. Also, it is. Re- real real quick, uh, I posted a link on Twitter uh, earlier uh, or late last week that um, that uh, you know, just might be kind of an interesting thing to throw out here. But uh, the uh, uh, Frontier, the the developers of Elite Dangerous, uh, there was a story about how they have. They are focusing on Steam VR in terms of development over Oculus. Apparently, they've had some problems uh, making Elite Dangerous work uh, with with SDK zero point uh, seven, and that uh, it's not been apparently it's not been like an easy process, kind of you know getting it to SDK zero point eight. But uh, apparently, Steam VR is uh, has been pretty friendly as uh, as far as they're concerned, and that you know they're they're very clear that they're not. They're not giving up on Oculus. That they are, they are developing for the Rift, but that mm-hmm. um, it's, it's just, just it, taking them more work to get there. Yeah, and it's just Steam VR is their focus. So you know, it's just, it's one of those. It's just kind of interesting to see, it, just you know how these things are, are kind of shaking out. But uh, yeah, it, it seems like uh, Oculus and uh, and HTC and and obviously uh, PlayStation are going to have uh, more company than just uh, the Samsung Gear VR, not too distant oh. in the future. Well, absolutely. There's another move that we just saw today, Brent, that the general manager of, of uh, Vine 
Twitter's uh, you know video service. Yeah, Vine has has moved over to Google to work on VR. Oh, what um, do you know? Jonathan Blow uh, has told us that he is his new game of The Witness, which well, comes out tomorrow. I don't know that he told us. I mean, no, he told us. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> has told us the gaming public at large, not you and I specifically. Thank you for clarifying yes. uh, that he will be uh, is working on doing VR implementation for the Witness, although he won't be doing it for PlayStation VR. Apparently, right? Just on the PC. Um, just on the PC. <clears throat> so uh, there's a lot that seems to be going on in the last few weeks, and it seems that the the actual announcement of a release release date and price for a consumer VR has sort of kickstarted. A lot of the conversation, and so no pun intended. Yeah, so, no kidding. Um, uh, if we were continuing to do a weekly podcast, no doubt it would be heavily VR focused. But we will be doing. Don't you worry, people. People have asked me. You'll, to do, you'll get do, your VR fix from us. You'll get your VR from, fix from us as long as you stay subscribed to our feed. There will be videos. We um, I get my Rift in hopefully early April, but definitely in April. Yeah. Um, I know. I think Fabian Winkler ordered one. I think. Um, but uh, I will do some sort of unboxing, uh, I think, and certainly I will be talking about it. So you will get your VR fix from us. Uh, the other fix you're going to get from us is your SmackDown fix. <laughs> That's all right. right. Yes, We Lord all X. need our SmackDown fix. And, of course, last week... Complete with a trailer this time. We talked about... It, it, was, it, was, the, it was the imminent gaming event of... Uh, I, I mean, basically, last week was all about two things. It was about Snowzilla 2016 here uh, on the North American East Coast, and it was about the rematch. Of course, last week, Lord X brought us the uh, the appearance of Lauren and myself on his uh, his Friday Night Fights <laughs> yes. uh, series, and uh, and I was robbed. I was clearly robbed. I, I had Lauren <laughs> on several occasions, and the ref just, uh, just couldn't count fast enough. <laughs> but, uh, but I... I was I was not satisfied with that, and I said, you know, like I, I've got to have a rematch. But you know, if you're going to do a rematch, it's got to be bigger, it's got to be bolder, and uh, and it's got to involve blue leather and tassels. And so those are the three requirements for any good rematch. <laughs> and Lord X is bringing you exactly that in this tag team rematch featuring myself, Tony Grice, taking on the awesome possum duo of Lauren and Daniel. That's right. Yeah, that's so right. The video, the video that we've linked to here in the show notes is actually the trailer for that fight. Uh, and then, additionally, if you go to Lord X's channel, there's also the fight itself, uh, and it is uh, once again fantastic. Lord X has uh, shared with us that he's making this in WWE 2K13, 2K16. Yep. Uh, and uh, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, and and I don't, Brent. You know, you know what I noticed, by the way. Mm. Everybody, all the wrestlers have a nickname, right? Yeah. Not me. I have no nickname. And it's the silence to me, the absence of the nickname that is deafening. And I feel like Lord X wants to, because the only thing we've ever, like, sort of the nickname we've ever only coined for me or anything like it yeah. has to do with me being Jewish. And I feel like <laughs> maybe maybe Lord X wants to put that in there. Like, the silence is deafening. Maybe he wants to put it in there, but he doesn't want to say, like, the big Jew yeah. or Laura on the nose or the Hebrew hammer, uh, the Hebrew hammer, right? I mean, I have right. been called L train in the past. Yeah, uh, you could use I that. You, uh, and I mean, L bomb, you know, like you know, L bomb. That's true. Lauren L-bomb. the bomb, bomb garden. That's true. Um, that's true. So maybe in the next rematch, he will coin a, a phrase. But I feel like I felt like when he was introducing me, he wanted to say like the nose or something, right? Or, and just couldn't or uh, couldn't quite bring hammer, himself but, to do it. Which is fine. It's understandable. It's phenomenal. You guys, if you haven't watched these videos. You've got to go watch these videos. They're absolutely hysterical. I think my favorite comment was from my, my buddy, uh, Benjamin, who is as f- like as far away from a wrestling fan as you can be. Um, and he posted to Twitter that he could never have imagined himself watching a fake, fake wrestling match for 20 minutes and loving it. But, <laughs> but he did. That is awesome. So well, you thank you it. again, Lord X, for making those videos. They're really... They're phenomenal, and anybody who's listening, if you haven't checked them out, get your ass over there right now. All right, so uh, coming up next, Republic, a game we've talked about a number of times on this show, and uh, and in fact, uh, we've uh, we've we've done an interview with uh, twice Ryan Payton. He's come on the show twice and uh, talked to us about uh, Republic and and other things. But uh, Republic is back in the news this week because it's coming to PS4 now that uh, all the episodes for the game are complete there's going to be a, a quote-unquote box version of uh, of republic heading to ps4 they've uh, of course 
you know, redone the interface and everything to be friendly to the PS4 as opposed to the uh, the touchscreen uh, yep. interface, mobile platform. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's it's really amazing to to kind of have watched the the life of this game. You know, this is you know one of those sort of like early post Double Fine uh, Kickstarter success stories in gaming. This and the Banner Saga, which which interestingly enough, the Banner Saga was also. Uh, in the news uh, last week, uh, because th- there was a story talking about how Sony was really instrumental in helping uh, Alex and the guys at Stoic Studio get the Banner Saga onto the Vita, and it's just it's really amazing yeah. to. And Alex was on this show. Are you seeing a twice. through line here, Brent? Twice, two, two huge Kickstarter success stories, both on the show. Ernie Klein on the show twice, and, yeah, best and, New and, York and now Times Steven bestseller. Spielberg is directing the adaptation his of his film. So I, basically, this, this, all I'm this saying, has to be. Causation, not correlation. Obviously, obviously. But anyway, uh, we want to we want to wish uh, everybody over at uh, Camouflage and the best on uh, on Republic going to PS4. It's a it's a fun game. It's a, it's a really really uh, great thing to see these games uh, do what they set out to do and, and continue to uh, to be relevant and uh, to you know to grow into these other platforms. So we just wanted to uh, mention them and wish them uh, all the best. Yeah, is it weird, Brent, that I can't get over? Uh, I, I still, even though I watch his video and you see Ryan and, and these other people that work there calling it Republic. Yeah, I, I can't get past it. It just still it looks like I can't get past Republic. It um, looks like Republic. I can't. I look at it and I'm like, Ryan, you're saying it wrong, dude. Uh, I mean, it's understandable. Like I, I get where you're coming from, but I think the thing that you're failing to recognize is that you have a speech impediment. So, and, and, and that he's actually the one that created the game yes and that you really don't have a say in it yes although you did you did create his career for him uh, you know because he was on the show twice that's as true. we just established that's exactly through, right uh, a little thing i like to call the scientific method that's exactly right james burton white paper games they make a game they come on our show bam they're now putting it on ps4 bam just like that um i'm trying to think of of, of who we ought to get on, <laughs> who we ought to get on the show to be successful next Hideo Kojima, that guy's out of a job. Oh, totally, totally. I right? mean, literally I mean, out of a job. That guy needs some Contract help. Is, he needs help. He needs to come on the show twice. I've I've come close to meeting him once, and by come close... <laughs> you, do you mean at E3, like where he made us take a picture of you I, sort of standing in the general vicinity of him? Yes, I, I mean, where, where Kojima, like, actually kind of, like, Ruben was trying to photobomb Kojima, but Kojima photobombed Ruben. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how it works uh, down in Kojima town. That's right. So anyway, uh, we're going to close out the garage this week. I thought your segue might be. So speaking of the Japanese, <laughs> what a what a terrible generalization. Um, well, I mean, he is Japanese. That's true. That's not a generalization at all. No, and so is this company. It's just that he, other than the fact that, <laughs> that this company is Japanese and he's Japanese, they have nothing. Well, nothing <laughs> in common whatsoever. And they're in the gaming industry. Okay, but that's, you're all right. right. I'll grant you that. All right, I'm a racist. What do you want from me? Uh, as long as we all agree on it. So Nintendo, the NX, their new, their new console, which is uh, has been rumored consistently to be. Some kind of hybrid that will combine both a a, a handheld and some sort of um, not not quite a home console, but some sort of of like home console like unit that the two are going to work in conjunction. But essentially, it's going to all kind of be the same thing. Uh, the Nintendo NX, we've got a little bit of news on. We know that we're going to be getting some uh, some more information about this this year. We know this from uh, Nintendo's new president. But the rumor that we're talking about right now is there's an analyst that is predicting that the portable part of this new NX console is going to be coming out later this year in 2016. And the price is predicted to be about $200 US. And then the the kind of the, the home console, I'm using the big air quotes here, the home console half of this equation. In theory, what we're talking about here is like whatever this handheld is, that's going to you know be a handheld console in its own right, but it's also going to be your your controller or something for this this home version. Like you know the two are going to be dependent upon one another. So I, I guess may, maybe a little something like a you know like a Steam Link, uh, you know kind of thing. You know something that's going to you know get the the game from the controller to the TV, but maybe it's got some processing stuff so that it's in HD or whatever. Um. 
But anyway, the prediction is that the handheld part's going to be out in 2016, and then the console part's going to be out in 2017. They're predicting a $200 price point for the handheld, and no price point mentioned for the uh, the, the console thing. half of it. So I posted uh, I posted a, a little something about the NX to Twitter. I have no idea if this is a good idea or not for Nintendo. I have no idea if it's a smart business move for them. If it will if it will be different enough to get people's attention. If it will if it will be successful. I have no idea if any of that is true. But I'm so down if they were to do something like this. You know, I, I love my 3DS. I, I, I've played my 3DS to an obscene amount. I have played my 3DS more than my Vita. Uh, and and I love the idea of... And, I mean, obviously Nintendo has great success with handheld consoles, but I love the idea of a Nintendo handheld console, you know, you know just, like, ba- basically buying, like, an add-on, and now your Nintendo handheld console is just your fucking Nintendo console, period. There's something about that idea that I really, really like, and I am curious to see what Nintendo does with it. Of course, you know, it's kind of a whole new day over there, and, you know, Nintendo seems like they're on the verge of doing a lot of really different kinds of things, at least by their own standards. And, and I'm excited. I, I, want, I want Nintendo to succeed. I, I think that they are an important force in the game industry. They're an important sort of you, you like like basically Nintendo is to gaming what what I desperately want uh, for for American politics, which is a viable third party, and uh, and so I love what Nintendo represents, and uh, and, and I really am anxious to see what uh, what they end up doing with the NX, which in theory we'll find out about around E three. Yeah, it's interesting. So uh, obviously, super nebulous. There's another piece of this article, Brent, that I think is sort of no small thing that really jumped out at me. And that is, it says in this article that it's worth noting the report uh, is also the source of, the, uh, that is the report, the source just the rumor, uh, says that the NX may work with smartphones, PCs, and competing consoles. Yeah. Doesn't say what that means. Uh, and uh, it, that's just such a weird thing. Like, it might work with smartphones, PCs, and competing consoles. I don't know what that means. And, and that kind of jumped out at me. Well, I do I, think it's... I wonder if it's like like... I'm thinking about like a Nintendo app, you know, that could run on mobile devices, that could run on PCs. What about the competing console thing? Well, yeah, like that's the thing I'm trying to think of is like, you know, what would that Nintendo app be? I mean, you know, you know, would it be like a a Nintendo app that's got, uh, you know, that you can watch like the Nintendo Directs on, and it has. um, But why the hell would PlayStation or Xbox put that on their device? I don't know. I, I I don't know what they've got in mind exactly, but uh, it, yeah, I don't either. It just and, it, and maybe there's maybe there's some information about that floating around that I'm ignorant of. But yeah, um, no, I don't know. I mean, in this article, it's just it's just kind of there, and it felt like you throw that, and all of a sudden, it feels very kitchen sinky. But well, very, I, I guess like, I guess what I'm trying to say is like I I don't imagine that what they're talking about is some sort of profound interaction. Like, oh, you know, if you've got your Nintendo NX console, you can you can beam that to your television through a Nintendo box or your PlayStation 4 or your Xbox One, you know, or, or you know, your 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 Google Play or your Apple TV or whatever. Or your Google Chrome, excuse me. Like Chromecast or whatever yeah. you mean. Um, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I yeah, mean. maybe that I mean that sounds really I'm not interesting. expecting that is I guess what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean that that would be crazy <laughs> for you to be able to do. I it would see be maybe crazy Chromecast. good. Yeah, it would be. Could you imagine if you could, if, if like all of them opened up the ecosystem that much that you could do that? But it'd be fascinating. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing. And, and what you're describing is like a Steam Link, you know, if that's what it ends up being. Um, uh, I think it's interesting. The Wii U was a, you know, an interesting experiment in, in integrating a sort of tablet like controller, which I actually thought was a decent idea. I've never really played much with it, but uh, obviously it didn't shake out for them the way that the initial Wii did. But no, but, um, but plenty of people have made the comments like, gee, if the, the Wii U controller were a, a like a, a handheld console in its own right, they'd really have something here, and maybe Nintendo was listening. Yeah, maybe they were. I guess we'll find out soon enough. And we're back in the clubhouse. Everybody pull up a chair, kick up your feet. We're going to talk a little bit. Uh, but before we get to our topic of the week lauren has some poll results and listen i don't want to overstate this but this is the biggest poll we've ever had lauren it is and it's all you baby 
we cannot come to this the final episode of the weekly installment. Which, by the way, Brent, this is episode two hundred and thirty-five. Uh, uh, just shy, just shy. Of BBC's. 250 episode record that's that's true. right 235 episodes that's that's pretty good i gotta say it is pretty good uh, although uh you know like we're, we're counting obviously the x factor and as well as uh, outlaw gamer radio right but we're not counting things like postmortems. actually we're probably up there in the 250 range if you mm, count the postmortems, and we had we a couple of special eight. one-offs i think we did eight postmortems. i can't remember and then didn't we have I a could, couple other up, one-off but- shows uh, you and Tony did an episode about the Vita one time, as I recall, and we've done a couple of, uh, we, I don't think we've counted like our E3 coverage as actual, like, you know, as actual episodes. Maybe we did in the Axe Factor days, but certainly the last E3, uh, you know, coverage that we did, we didn't, uh, we didn't do that as a, uh, as a numbered episode. We didn't do our game of the year, or maybe I'm wrong about that, but we did like, we didn't do our game of the year episode as a numbered episode. So yeah, you know. Yeah, I mean, we've done nigh on 250, you and I, together, it, somewhere it's, around it's that. It's close. It's very yeah, close. Yeah. And you're right. At 250 episodes of podcasting that you and I have done together, to this point, there are more to be done. But of the 250 that we've done to this point, this is singly your largest poll. Yeah, well, that's not something you hear every week. So. That's true. So uh, the reason the reason Brent's poll is so big uh, is because he gave you five cho- He gave you the option of selecting up to your top five of uh, the most anticipated games for 2016. Of course, the question was worded, which of Brent and Lauren's picks are your top five anticipated for 2016? So these weren't every video game coming out, but the ones we talked about. And this is how it shook out. I'm not going to read down all of them, but I'm going to read what came up to be the top five. Coming in tied for uh, fifth place, there were three games, excuse me, two games with 11%. No Man's Sky had 11%, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided had 11%. Coming in tied for what would be second place, uh, with two games having 12%, Mass Effect Andromeda and Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, And coming in in first place with a whopping 15%, Uncharted 4. So there you go. uh, There you go. No Man's Sky, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Mass Effect Andromeda, Horizon Zero Dawn, and Uncharted Uncharted 4. 4. Out of the games Uh, that Lauren and I have picked for our most anticipated 2016, those are the ones that the audience is most interested in. Indeed. Um, all right, Brent. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, what we're going to talk about this week and the topic? So we are going to talk about community. This is something that we talk about on the show quite a bit, actually. Uh, we, we talked about it a number of times in the past, and I uh, I posted a in in the ride along blog as opposed to the, the the typical boilerplate. You know, send us your ride along. I posted something a little bit different this time, and I asked you guys to talk about what community means to you, because this is something that Lauren and I have been talking a lot about lately. And a big part of the reason that we do this show is community. We, we've, often, we've often said that, uh, that you know, we think the, the Outlaw Gamer community and the Epic Battle Axe community before it is, uh, is the best gaming community online. And... We, we really do believe that. It's not something that we say just so you guys feel special and, and come back and listen to us. We, we really believe it. And we've been part uh, of other gaming communities uh, that have, have proven it. And I think that it's one of those things that it's easy for us to kind of say, um, it's easy for us to say that you, know, that you guys are the reason that, the, that the, the show exists and you guys are the reason we come back each week. But sort of defining why that is, we thought might be an interesting topic. Why community is important, and, and not just our community, but, you know, kind of community in general, online communities, gaming communities, you know, what is it about, uh, what is it about those things that, you know, because obviously this is a relatively recent uh, development in human evolution, and it's interesting how important this community has become to us, and we wanted to know what it means to you guys. And so we asked you, to just talk about what does community mean to you? Our community, you know, game communities in general, how has it affected you, affected the games you play or don't play? Has it affected the industry itself? Those kinds of things. And so we're going to talk about, you know, our feelings about this, but we also wanted to share some of the things that you guys had to say. And uh, so we've got some some comments here. And Lauren, if, I mean, unless you'd uh, like to say anything before we start, I thought, uh, you know, we'd just like, uh, you know, read read some of these and uh and just see what our our community members think no i think it's great we're actually we're going to read all of them you guys posted 
um, because we really appreciate your contributions and we want to share what your thoughts are. So, Brent, if you want to start. I will. So, uh, Miguel Ramos said, community is a sense of belonging. It's more than the actual factual things you do. It's like family. You may spend more time with other people. You may not do much, but family is always there. It's where you come from and where you return to. Community for me is just that, the place where you belong. I never met another outlaw, never spoke to one in person. Don't know if I've ever played a game with one, but I do feel like this space is my gaming family. Maybe I come here every day. Maybe I comment. Maybe I skip a few weeks, but no matter what, this community is always here, and I felt it always would be. This sense was built on years of interactions, of fights, discussions, of fun times, of discovery, of sharing, of taking care of, even nurturing. Like all families, sometimes not all of us get along, but like most close families, it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. Of course, if the outlaws, axe heads, or the family, Brent, Lauren, like Daniel and Tony once upon a time, are the parents, the patriarchs that make the family gather, the house, the home that keeps the family united. They make the rules, provide the space, and the reason for us to come back together again. And like all good parents, they give the freedom for every family member to grow and fit in. They present new ideas, new things, but are not closed to the thoughts of everyone else. In fact, they welcome them. And this is something I cannot find anywhere else in the gaming world. Uh... You know, we didn't read these ahead of time uh, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, we wanted it to be fresh. And <laughs> I was actually, I'm not laughing because we didn't read them ahead of time. I'm laughing because I know the response you're having. Yeah, to like uh, that's. I'm actually kind of emotional about that. That's um, that's exceedingly uh, generous of and you to say. It is very generous and thoughtful. And this is why I wanted to read these, Brent. I, ca- I got to tell you guys, as much as. Um, uh, you know, Brent and I started doing this because we like each other and we like games, and and uh, we personally connected the two of us uh, over games and have very. Uh, um, while we um, certainly have different viewpoints on types of games or aspects of gaming, we both kind of approach Which our relationship. Which is another way of games. saying that you're wrong about Metal Gear Solid Five. <laughs> we uh, <laughs> and the Last of Us. Yes, obviously. Uh, uh, we we both approach games in a similar way with the, with the uh, what we believe to be the respect that the medium deserves and the thoughtfulness and and conversation that we believe uh, is missing in so many other places. Yeah. But um, I have to say, as um, uh, as special as it is, and as much fun as it is to sort of talk and joke with Brent and do this stuff, uh, reading comments like this from from you guys from all over the world, you'll see there's there's more of these. We're going to read every single one of them. Is is just tremendously, tremendously moving to, as you can uh, hear in Brent's voice and, and hopefully in mine, uh, to both of us. And it, it so means so much to us that it means so much to you, and it, and it means this much to us or it, to to me as well. Um, and that's just it's just fantastic. And, and this the website. Uh, just so you know, Miguel, it's going to go on, and the community will still be here. So that that's right. Uh, that that set that uh, ability to come and go and comment and talk that's not going anywhere. You know, the, I, I, the the one thing that I just want to say before we move on is that uh, what what uh, Miguel is saying there at the end about um, presenting new ideas and not being closed to the thoughts of everyone else, but actually welcoming it. If we have done that, like. You know, one day when I, when I finally, you know, check out of this train ride, I can go happy on that alone. Like if, if we have actually done that and engendered that, that sense of, of welcoming new ideas, because let's face it, a lot of people in this world right now, not exactly on that particular train with us, but if we have actually engendered that sensibility, I could not be more proud. I, I, I agree with you, Brent. I have to say that I take, a tremendous amount of pride in that. And doing this podcast, uh, not only did it get me my job working as community manager um, for the golf club for HB Studios, yeah. um, where I could have stayed if I wanted to, and that could have been my foray into the you know into gaming. But um, it's it's taught me to be a better person. It's taught me about what happens when you uh, respect people and you uh, expect uh, people um, to be intelligent and not stupid, and you treat them with the kind of respect that that brings. And when you're fair and honest with people, uh, that, that people are, uh, generally good and people can interact in a healthy way, even in a place as fucking crazy as the internet and around a, a, a topic as, you know, so uh, crazy and sometimes, uh, ex- 
explosive as gaming. And yeah. uh, I, I too take great pride in that. So, uh, but we have many more of these, and we will continue to uh, muse on the on the comments and read them. So I'm going to move on. Ian Alexander Arts writes, I love our community, chatting on the feed, but I feel like I could do better at trying to interact with everyone. Playing Rocket League last year with Aberjam, Brack, and Aussie Legend was some of the most fun I had all year. I hope we have many more games and we can share in the future, and maybe I'll think about trying out more multiplayer games just to have a chance to hang out with my fellow OGs. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I got to say, man, you know, I said to you last week or last couple weeks... <laughs> Unfortunately, we're going to talk about it a little bit more this week. Yeah. Not much. Uh, I've been playing a lot more Battlefield 4. I got to play with some of the Axe Heads. Playing games online is is just so, so much fun. Playing, I played Rocket League with some of our friends from uh, the Axe Head Army. Yep. Uh, excuse me, the Outlaws. Uh, I played uh, Battlefield 4 with some of the Outlaws, and it's so much fun. And I just kept thinking to myself, like, why am I not doing this more often? I need to be like playing with these guys more often, all these people that... We communicate with constantly on the website. So I am hopeful moving forward uh, to also continue to play more online video games. Uh, and maybe we have if we have the Mumble servers there for people to play together. Yep. We provide a server for you guys to, to for communication via PC. Um, and, and maybe we could do more to, to facilitate uh, or, or somebody in the community or whatever to facilitate game nights. But it is a ton, ton of fun to play together. I do believe that uh, I believe we've got a scheduling feature, uh, you know, on, on engine that uh, we don't really use that much, but uh, perhaps, uh, you know, we could, uh, we could maybe roll that out, promote that a little bit. And, and that would facilitate exactly the kind of interaction you're talking about. Also, what would help me is if uh, we could get the human race to switch over to a 36 hour day, then there literally would be more hours in the day to play games. That's true. Uh, we'll work on both of those things for you guys just as soon as we can. That's right. All right. Um, next uh, comment is from Aaron B. He says, community is important for mental health. We humans are social beings, and having someone we can relate to and share stories with is essential to our happiness. The OGS and EBA before it have meant a lot to me for these reasons. I've tried out games I otherwise would never have given a, given a second glance as a result of OG suggestions and praise. This is truly a great collection of people. Something rare these days. I always love hearing the perspective uh, perspectives of OGs from different cultures than myself. Thanks, Brent and Lauren, for making the community possible. I eagerly await your next podcast. Uh, you know, he, that, that, that's absolutely true. I mean, that's that's absolutely true. I, I can't remember. I can't remember who I was who I was listening to, but I was listening to some podcast, and somebody uh, somebody in the mental health uh, profession was. Uh, you know, was remarking that that essentially the motivation that drives human beings is we want to get away from pain and uh, and, and we want to move towards happiness. And and essentially, like that is the, the the underlying driving psychology behind you know everything that we do. But that's antithetical, actually, to listening to our podcast. So how do you explain that? <laughs> yeah, some because I don't so, somehow we've broken we've broken. Social science, right there. That's exactly right. Now I want to uh, thank you, Aaron B, and thank you, Ian, by the way, for the for the kind words. Thank you. Uh, um, we we feel the same way, and I love one. I love hearing that people play games that they otherwise would not have played by coming to the uh, coming to listening to our podcast and coming to the Outlaw Gamer Society. And I'm the same thing. I play games that I otherwise might never have played. And there's so many amazing different genres out there. Uh, and that kind of discussion is is also super uh, special, I think, on this website. And again, I want to reiterate to you guys, um, I agree that this is a truly, as Aaron said, a truly great collection of people, and the website is going nowhere. We will continue to be here and, and, and moderate and enforce rules like we always have, have the same expectations. The website will stay the same, um, and, and you know, with a few less podcasts. Um, but uh, uh, this community is powerful, and I come here three or four times, if not more, every single day. And I have no intention of, of stopping that habit. So, next one's yes, your uh, Next one comes from Starbound. Starbound writes, regarding the Outlaw Gamer Society community, even the TAF, the Axe Factor, or uh, Epic Battle Cry community, we are people from different walks of life, different genders, different races, countries, and religions, but we are all brought together by one common factor. We love gaming. This has allowed us to share our interests and views, even if we don't always see eye-to-eye with each other's opinions. We can respect and accept one another, and in general, have a good time playing games and discussing what is important or means something to us. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, and again, thank you for your comments, Starbound. It's so, it's so true. We have people from all socioeconomic backgrounds, all racial, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity backgrounds on this website. Uh, I've never, uh, in the 
when when did EBA start, Brent? Two thousand eight. Is that right? October two thousand eight. So in the eight years that that we have been working together in this on this community, um, I, I have uh, never or or essentially never heard anybody say anything hateful or hurtful um, based on any of those things. And um, it's just it's it's such a, a diverse and interesting group of people who uh, who have just agreed to come together and have interesting and awesome conversation. Hell yeah. Uh, the next comment comes from Abel Almighty. <laughs> yes. To him, community means free weekly podcasts for life. Whose life? <laughs> your life? My life? Uh, your cat's life, apparently, because the weekly podcasts are stopping. I'm sorry. So, so is somebody going to die not. because we're stopping doing this, Brent? Is that what he's uh, saying? May- maybe, he's, maybe he's planning on murdering us. I hope not. Um, um but you know, actually, uh, actually, your comment does does raise you know something that we we, we talk about often. That is, uh, you know, it's not free to podcast. It, you know, it, it does uh, it, it does cost money, and uh, and and that is yet an, an, another thing that our community has just been amazing about is uh, is the fact that uh, you know that you guys through your contributions, uh, you know, we've we've been ad free for uh, several years now because uh, you guys have supported the show and the site. And and allowed those things to uh, to exist as they are now without you know without having to you know to worry about the annoyance of pop up ads or you know maybe some of the questionable ethical stuff uh, about sponsorship and, and things and that's that's allowed us to to do exactly the show that we wanted to do say whatever we wanted to say and not have to worry about any of those things and so uh, that is just yet another reason that you guys are so epic. Indeed. All right, coming from Dews Dark. Deus Dark. Deus Dark. <laughs> uh, Deus Dark writes, definition of community. One, a group of people living in the same place or have a particular characteristic in common. Two, a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. He writes, we don't fall into the first definition, in my opinion. We are not living in the same place or have, a character- or have characteristics in common. But this isn't a bad thing. What we have is something more. Our characteristics are different and our opinions are different. It's our differences that provide the pillars of our community and makes a richer community. This community is so rich that it's affected what games I play and how I view the gaming industry. It's affected how I buy games and caused me to be a follower of the six-day edition. What do you want? The six-day edition. Uh, This community has caused me to be okay with in-game purchases to support the development team and the company who created the game. In the end, the community, for as long as I have been a member, EBA, EBC, TAF, OGS, OGR has made me a better person than I was before, and I know that I'll conti- it'll continue to mold me into the person that I would want to be. Thank you, Brent and Lauren. Thank you, DK and Tony. Thank you to all the moderators of the site, and thank you most of all to the community. You guys, for lack of a better term, rock. No, you rock. No, you rock. Uh, that's an excellent post, A.S. Dark, and thank you, thank you uh, and to all the community, and thank you also for uh, thanking the moderators. We would maybe like to take a moment and thank all the moderators as well who worked so hard on helping us and all the contributors over the years, Keith and Jess and all the other people that have contributed Steve to the site. Again, and, yeah, and everybody. We're not shutting the site I've down. I'm just, I just, you know, I just want to say it out loud. And um, just an awesome, awesome uh, community. Yeah. And to, to read that, you know, this community, this thing that we share has helped to make you a better person. Uh, which I feel it has done for me yeah. is uh, is touching, and I connect with that. You know, the the other thing that uh, the the other thing that he was saying there that I found really interesting is that uh, that 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 notion of how community is evolving. Uh, and, and I remember I saw some talking head on a on a cable news show one time bemoaning the uh, the the fact that uh, you know that that people were so kind of you know wrapped up in you know like what they were doing like on their iPhones and stuff and not not paying attention to the people around them. I remember like there was that whole thing on Facebook, like that, that whole like look up meme that, uh, that that guy did. And I remember like really being confused by that because you know, they're saying like, Oh, you know, you're not connecting with, you know, the humanity. You're just like, you know, stuck in your device. I'm like, I'm stuck in my device communicating with humanity, you know? I, and, and that's the thing is that like, you know, the human race up until now, community has been more of like, it's been like a geographic thing, you know? It's like your community were the people that lived within, say, 30 miles of you. And now community is no longer restricted by that. Now you have a choice in community. And you see this, you know, this new thing, you know, the, the rise of, communi- of a community built around interest, around shared experience and interest. And, and, and that, it, it, that's really interesting, you know, be- because now 
it, it's not just about, you know, you're part of the community that you're born into or that you, you know, that you live you, you know, or, you know, depending on where you live or whatever, you have a choice in the community that you can belong to, you know, based on, you know, your own sense of self identity and, and all that. And that I think is really empowering. And it is a powerful thing. There's not, I, I, I met, I have met some uh, members of OG, both playing games with them on, on voice chat and in person. I, I uh, you know, Daniel uh, Tralamanza, who was living in, in Berlin and I met him in Sao Paulo, Brazil, face to face, had an awesome time hanging out with him. Uh, uh, Nico, uh, who I talk to pretty regularly on chat. Uh, I talk to, uh, although not lately, Nico, son of a bitch, but um, <laughs> uh, lives down in Argentina. Uh, my good friend Danny, uh, who I met, shoot, give me your shoes, who I met, uh, 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 have never met in person, but met through uh, here as well. I, I play games with him constantly. Um, I, I play games with, uh, you know, we got we have Aussie legend down in uh, Australia. <laughs> down in, uh, uh, I was gonna I was gonna say New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and uh, just just, just uh, people from all over him. the world. I mean, all, <laughs> all over the world. I love that about this podcast. It, it, it's exactly like you said, Brent, about this this podcast and website. It's not about geographic location anymore. Uh, it's no. it's it's about a common shared interest in this website connects people literally around the globe people who care about each other and and who i feel like uh um wh- whether it's on the w- i mean god the, the shit we've seen brand people going through emotional stuff on here and supporting each other going through personal bouts with depression or mental health issues or family members that have died my mother died while while we were uh, doing the show i mean the, the, yeah. the amount of support that we provide to each other is fantastic my and, daughter was born I, while we were doing this show that's ex- well not not exactly not literally we were, we were doing, it was actually really weird because we were on skype and i was watching the whole, it was uncomfortable but yeah it was, it was uh, a little strange but when I met Daniel in person, uh, Tralamatsa, not not Kaiser. When I met Daniel Tralamatsa in uh, in um, Sao Paulo, it was uh, you know, I mean, it was I've been t- I've been t- it was like I'd known him for years, right? Because I have, yeah, you know, and and uh, uh, it's pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Um, speaking of people living in other parts of the world, That's our right. resident, what, what? our resident drunk Scotsman living in Japan. That's right. Tokyo Choo Choo chimes in to say EBC was the cat's pajamas. It really was the very best gaming podcast ever made, in my opinion. Fantastically, the EBA community was a respectful and thoughtful one, giving me an outlet to commune about games without having to face down trolls every few seconds. I was quite into writing humorous blogs about classic games back then. Anyone remember the uh, the Choo Choo's old remembering blog posts? My connection with EBA and its community deepened when Hans created the Axe Head Assembly podcast, an endeavor that I quickly shanghaied and made my own. We recorded 50 episodes of that ramshackle piece of shit. It was a right mess, poorly recorded and ill-structured, but boy, did I have a lot of fun doing it. Along the way, I made many friends among the rotating guests, such as Aberjam, Alexander Art, Sigmund Rumpf, and many others. After EBA closed down and OGS took root, myself and two Axe Head besties, Brack and Human Metal, started another far superior and more professionally recorded podcast, Radiophonic Sea Creatures. Again, we are having so much fun making that show. I consider my two co-hosts to be really good friends, friends I would never have met without being part of this community. Added to which, as much as I loved EBA, the community around OGS impossibly became stronger than before. There might be a few less people on OGS than EBA, but we all have passion and a deeper connection with each other. It's like the game site version of Cheers, a place where everybody knows your name. We're not faceless here. Everybody knows their Rowans from their Aussie Legends and their Randy Marsh beers. It really is a great community here at OGS. That's why it's my homepage. That's why I check every single comment that rolls through the status feed. Simply put, OGS is the best thing on the net, except for Pornhub, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, I, well, there's a couple of things in there that really jump out to me. First of all, I, too, read every single comment in the activity feed. I don't think it, not a day goes by when I don't at least stop by, even on bad days, one time. Yeah. And I always read all the way back to yesterday's posts. Mm-hmm. I, I literally read every single post on that activity feed yeah. every single day. And, and m- almost all the time, every comment on every post. You know, I, I was just thinking about the activity feed itself. You know, when we first, uh, when we first switched to Ning, that was actually when that whole thing where, like, you know, Epic Battle Axe, like, closed down. And, like, you know, it was going to mm-hmm. be, like, a Facebook-only community there for a while. Yep. And, uh, and, then, and then we moved over to the Ning site. And, and the, uh, the, the activity wall... That that's the like one of the best things that has ever happened 
uh, to our website. But I, I think the activity feed, like just being able to like go and just kind of see, like moment to moment, day by day, what people are thinking, what they're playing, what they're into, stories that they're that you know that they're finding that uh, that they're wanting to share, videos and stuff like that. That has like I wish that we could have had that from the very beginning. Yeah, I don't even go. I, I honestly, I I almost never go to other gaming websites anymore because I know that anything that I need to know is going to be on EBA. Yeah, and if it's not on e, or on uh, OGS, excuse me, and if it's not on OGS, I probably don't need to know it. You probably don't care. Um, and I get super frustrated for the most part when I have to go to other websites and avoid their advertising grenades. Yeah. That they lob at us, but I thought that was pretty powerful. Also, I, I really, you know, uh, Tokyo. God damn it, I love you, man. Um, uh, he writes. He talks about how it's uh, an in-game, and I can't think of Tokyo without thinking of doing Sean Connery. It just I don't know why I can't get out of my head. Uh, but uh, 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 he writes about how it's like a game site version of Cheers, and it's a place where everybody knows your name. We're not faceless, and he's 100 percent right. Yeah. And everyone knows the Rowans from the Aussie Legends and the Randy Marsh beers. And I do want to say, which is true, and I love it. I absolutely fucking love it. I do want to say, um, particularly when we announced that we would be uh, finalizing the weekly podcast, we had a lot of people sort of jump on for the first time uh, and, and make comments. And, and people were saying, you know, I've never commented before, but I've been listening to you for five years and you're a weekly part of my life and I'm going to miss you so much or miss the podcast so much. And um, it's true that, that um, uh, uh, you know, we know each other's names, but, but this community always wants more people in it. And so if you're listening to this, and you don't know who Ozzy Legend or Randy Marshbeer is or Rowan or whatever. Uh, uh, we want you now or six months from now or whatever. It's so in, uh, it's so heartening to me when new people, when I see a comment from a name that I've never seen before because someone decides to start talking uh, with the rest of the community. And so, so I, I don't know. It, just, it makes me want to also just extend that invitation to the, to the thousands of people that, that are listening to the podcast that have never commented on the website. Uh, or never uh, actually, you know, joined. Uh, we want you here, so please, uh, please, please uh, get on here and, and, and learn these names yourself because you'll be glad you did. Yes, indeed. All right. So next up, we have a comment from Soul Nibbler. Community is a. W- <laughs> Let me back that up. Soul Nibbler got me there. He gets me every time I read this this comment. Community is a way overrated show. Also, I can't stand Joel McHale. I disagree, but you're okay. <laughs> I can't, it's taking me a couple of time. Joking aside, community in the sense of gatherings on the internet is to me somewhat of a safe haven. No matter how much shit people give you in real life, I know there is a place I can escape to where people, people, uh, where there are people that understand me and share many of the same uh, stuff that I like. I usually tend to stay at one community at a time. Another forum was that to me for many years until personal differences drove me away. It was with people he met in person. Since then, the Axe Head Army and now the Outlaw Gang is my constant home. I check the site every single day, several times per day. Not only can you get very in-depth discussions of the happenings in the video game industry here, it is also one of the most civilized platforms I've known in the virtual space. Still, there can be a wide range of diverse opinions, but it never really goes overboard or leads to personal vitriol, and that is a scarcity on the web. Personally, this community and this site helped me enormously in recently hard, recent hard times where I just wanted to shut myself off from the entire world. But there was still the community that gave me the feeling of belonging and thus averting the threat of complete isolation. I can't see a point in the near or distant future in which I don't want to be among my fellow OGs anymore. And even without a constant weekly podcast, let's all hold this haven of joy and insanity for as long as we can. Uh, Soul Nibbler, thank you so much. It's such a fantastic comment, and, and I just I echo everything you said, and we're, we're so glad you're here too. Uh, yeah, man, that's, uh, you know, that having that place that you can go to having, having that, you know, that, that kind of, that kind of, you know, when, when everything else is like not going so well, having that place that you can go and, and be around people that, uh, that, that you like and that you, uh, that you enjoy hanging out with and, and feel, you know, relevant and respected that that's just, that's huge. And, and I'm so happy we've been able to, to engender that. Fabian Winkler, uh, my old uh, Borderlands cohort. And my soon-to-be VR bro. Yeah, uh, he says, To me, community feels like home in a student home. A not-blood-related family. People come together to enjoy each other's presence and involve each other in conversations. It's also a place where you can just sit down and follow the different conversations as a passive listener. That's that's right. I mean, you know, it's... And and I guess, you know, that's the thing. is like, you know, we've never... We've never really... Uh, we we've never really wanted to be anything else but that you know just just a place you know that people could come and and just you know discuss things and and you know just you know share that passion and everything but you know the fact that it's grown into 
a lot of different things, you know, like people are doing their own podcasts and, and YouTube shows, uh, you know, and Twitch streams and all that. It's really, uh, it, it, it's really awesome. But, you know, at the, and fuck making games too, and making fucking video games. That's but, right. uh, you know, but at its core is just, you know, exactly what he's talking about. Yep. Uh, all right. So, uh, big bad, big bad Giggy, whose name I don't think I've seen before, uh, just dropped a little note and says, not sure what it really means to me, but the thought of it going away makes me sad. That says it all, I guess. You know, it does. That, uh, that, that, that's, that's well put. Yeah. And we appreciate, uh, your, your sharing the sentiment. I think, I, I think it's a sentiment that's shared by many people, myself included, but again, uh, we're not, it's not going away. It's just, it, the community is not going away for damn sure. That's right. At least I don't see that happening. And the show's not uh, going the, away. It's just happening less frequently. That's exactly right. So, um, all right, Brent, next up, uh, is another, uh, comment from a listener who I've not seen post before, Dark Fletcher. Uh, Dark Fletcher writes, for me, this was a community, a place where I might not come every day, but I always feel welcomed when I do. We'll still come around after episode 50, but I will feel that something is missing. Um, and again, uh, you you are always welcome here. God damn it. And so keep coming back. The only thing that's going to be missing after episode 50 is... Episode 51. <laughs> 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 I mean, not to be glib. <laughs> We just got done telling them that wasn't what was going to happen. <laughs> 51, we will have 51. It'll just be a while. Uh, Christopher Brady says, I'm pretty sure everyone said what I think about the word community, but if you'll let me repeat some of it, a community is a place where people can get together and be accepted for who they are and where they can accept others in the same way. Often we have a tie. In this case, it's gaming. We may not always agree with each other, we may not always think the same way, but the one thing that this community has that no other on the internet has is mutual respect. And this is why I'm glad I'm a part of it. I also hope that I get to stay part of it for as long as I possibly can. I love you guys. You are all awesome people. That it's- is a sentiment worth repeating. Uh, since Lauren read two comments, I'm going to read two comments. Oh, I thought you were going to read Chris Brady's comment again because you said it was a sentiment worth repeating. Oh, that would have been good, though. Damn it. <laughs> Missed opportunity. Esteban, uh, who has, you know, we, we talked, uh, you know, briefly about, uh, about our, um, we talked briefly about our, um, our moderators and the people who have helped us out behind the scenes. And, uh, and, and, you know, we are so thankful to, uh, to Rowan and to Aberjam and Aussie legend and all the people who have come before them. Our first group yep. of moderators, Athena, Superman's doctor, Nick Long and Esteban, uh, Esteban has been with this site almost as long as I have. I don't know how he found us, but he found us early on and, uh, we just can't get rid of him, but, um, <laughs> that's a true story, but, uh, we really, really do have to say just, just, uh, how much, uh, Esteban's work and uh and and insight and uh feedback ha- have really been important to the website over the years and and we're so thankful to uh, to have had him and before you read his comment brent esteban i'm sitting here staring right now at my pop games borderland statues thinking about you and uh uh also esteban did it an ama- when we were looking at logos for the website did just a fucking crazy ass amazing drawing that uh He's- that i uh, it- He's a we just guy. ended up not using the logo, but God damn it, he is so talented. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. All right, go so ahead. Esteban says, eight years holding true to a vision from the man himself. Eight years. Regardless of format changes, the ideal that the internet doesn't have to be a vile cesspit and people can come together regardless of taste and engage each other civilly. It's no shock that we all have different views on games, but I never walked away hating someone or taking anything personally. It's completely unheard of on the internet, and it's never been compromised for numbers, metrics, or financial backing. It's due to all our members, past and present, and the efforts to share interest and to engage each other to try games we would have passed up. I don't have to be here. I choose to be here. Hopefully the site continues long after the podcast ends. We have a self-sustaining video game site that is up-to-date on all news without any of the hate. And that's a pretty remarkable thing. It goddamn is. God, I just, I, I'm getting a little emotional reading all this stuff, Brad. All right, next up from Lucius Silver. Lucius writes, uh, I don't know for sure what community means to me. However, I do know what this community means to me. Everything. I come here when I'm sad because there's always funny stuff lying around. I come here when I'm happy to spread the joy. I come here to speak with intelligent people and be heard in turn with no fear of reprisal. Sure, we don't always agree or share the same taste, but that's what makes our little corner of the internet so awesome. We don't put others down just because they're different. This is why I come here. This is why I stay. To me, this is home, and home is where family is. 
I don't even know what to say to that. You really don't have to say too much else because Lucia Silver already said it. He took the time to actually write it down. I might, I might just move that to the masthead of the website. Yeah, that that was uh, that was that's very appreciated. Thank you very much. Also, yes. uh, thank you for uh, sending those troops to me in Star Wars Commander. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Bred something of a whore. Lavitz says a community is usually a group of living beings sharing interests or place of living. Uh, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. This community, however, is much more than that. To me and to many other fellow axe heads or outlaws, this is a home away from home. It's a place where we not only find solace, but broaden our horizons, be it with new perspectives or new experiences, sharing a virtual battlefield or a text message back and forth. A community is also like any living thing. It grows, it matures, endures its losses, celebrates its achievements. We had our knocks along the way. Once highly featured in a now mostly unrecognizable GT, we lost a few listeners, but along the way we gained so many friends. The kinds of friends that hang around after EBC closed and came back and closed again, and who will be here for far longer after OGR ceases to be a weekly ray of laughter and joy in a sometimes hard week. We said this community is great time and time again, and it's as true now as it ever was before. Now, once more, let me thank you, Brent and Lauren, for powering through those hard days when it's tough to find the inspiration or time to deliver a great podcast. But you did. You always did. And most of all, thank you for fostering this community, for giving us home. Lastly, I want to thank my fellow outlaws. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, you guys have been more amazing than you could ever imagine. I know I don't write a lot on the site, but I read just about everything, and you guys make me laugh, made me think. Gave me new podcasts to listen to. What's up, Radiophonic Sea Creatures and Glitched Out Gaming Podcast? And made me feel like I belong to this community, to this family. Thank you. And then he puts a smiley face. <laughs> there have been a few smiley faces we haven't actually read aloud. Oh, yet. well, then we got to go back and read these all <laughs> over again. That's right. Uh, thank you, Lavitz. What a wonderful, wonderful comment and uh, uh, very touching. Uh, and... Um, I, 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 we, this community, this community truly is something special. I believe it. And I believe, I hope to God, I hope to God damn that I'm 75 years old, uh, and talking to Lavitz and to Alexander and to Alexander arts and Randy Marshbeer. And then I, I'm seeing Alexis's name run across the screen in front of me as I'm killing people around him. Yeah. Uh, I, I really hope that to be the case. And I intend to do everything I can to, to keep it, uh, that way. So me too. Our last comment uh, to read of the day, and again, we wanted to read all of these comments because uh, we feel like they're very, they're very meaningful both to Brent and I personally. Uh, we feel like being that meaningful to us personally, uh, they would likely be as meaningful to you, and it's nice to hear um, what people are saying. And for those that maybe don't come to the website to get to hear what people are saying and how much we care about each other and, and you guys, and, and so we wanted to make sure and read all of these for you. So last up, our last comment comes from Alexander. Uh, and Alexander writes, a co-op of hot chickens get together, play video games, talk about video games and stuff, even life, share erotic jokes about one another, and even cross a few lines in doing so. Guilty. Playing daily for the last 16 months with the same group of people from EBA OGS has just turned me around as a gamer. I no longer shrug at the thought of online co-op focused games. Hell, I look for them and I plan my purchases around what games they'll buy. I never had, I never had that with my friends because they're all filthy casuals who only play FIFA and NHL. <laughs> Shout out to Aberjam, Aussie Legend, Equinox, Hellion, and LJF927. Even way before that, I felt instantly welcome and embraced by the EBA BF4 crew when one Steam message said, BF4, bro? And I only stopped playing with those guys because I can't do U.S. time zones anymore. Shout out to that crew. You all know who you are. Cheers, Alex, a.k.a. Turnip, a.k.a. Batista. Uh, so that's also an awesome sentiment about playing games with, uh, uh, with OGSs. So, you know, I, I, I have to say that that's the, that's the one regret that I kind of have is, that, you know, just time constraints being what they are that, that I, I haven't had as many opportunities as you to play like multiplayer with people and stuff like that. But every time I have, it's always been just a, a fucking great time. It is a tremendously amazing time. Um, it is. Uh, with that, Brent, I, I think we should wrap up this section. Uh, we could do this all night. Um, uh, again, um, thank you to everybody for these wonderful, wonderful comments. Uh, Brent, I, th- again, well, I don't want it. The show is not. I was going to I was gonna take a moment here and thank you, Brent, mm. uh, for a weekly show for the last five years and the time that we've spent together, although I'm inclined not to do so because truly... Um, it's not been that fun. I mean, let's be honest. Not- I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's been okay. All right. Fuck it. Let's just lay it it's out on the table, okay, Brent. I mean, Let's just lay it out great. on the table. Come on. Um, uh, Brent and I were, just before this show started, we were already talking about what the next episode might look like and that it might be coming sooner than you think. So yeah. uh, don't get too excited, but the show's not over. But th- you guys, thank you so much. And I really, like, I can't say to you enough uh, how much I don't, while this is the end of uh, uh, of the weekly podcast, I don't want you to think of this as the end of anything. It's just uh, the community is not going away, and you will still get content from us, just sort of more when we're able to give it to you. So That's right. And, you know, I think the, the, the last thing that I want to say is just like what community means to me. And, and our community has completely changed my expectations for online community and essentially has ruined me. For most of the internet, you know, because there are plenty of like really toxic places out there. I I mean, uh, you know, now that now that I'm I'm not employed by them in any capacity and they're not even, you know, not even the same people there. I can tell you that, like, when we first went to game trailers, it was it was difficult at times because game trailer. There were pockets of game trailers community that were really toxic. And yet at the same time, so many of the people that are with us today found us through game trailers. And so obviously there you know like not everybody on game trailers you know you know felt that way and uh, and obviously you know there was something that we were we were putting out there that people were interested in and i i'm so happy i'm so happy you know because what that illustrates for me is that even in a community like like gt which you know which could be very negative at times even in in that community you can see that there are that there were people there that wanted to have you know, a, 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 a strong, you know, meaningful connection with other people, you know, who are just paying them, you know, the, the, the basic respect of, uh, of that, that just human respect, yeah, like normal, of just, yeah. you know, that, that anybody deserves. And I, I'm really glad that, uh, I, like, I feel like that's, that's a big part of our story, uh, as a community. And I, I'm really, I'm really proud of that. You know, maybe if we try hard enough, Brent, we could make this a little bit more evangelical and we could get this episode, this episode could kickstart, uh, all of our listeners proselytizing and and preaching about uh, OGS, we could take it out to the masses. Eventually, turn it into a religion, make it nonprofit, yeah, uh, and profit from the nonprofit. I mean, I know, I know, Elron has already done it. Who would our <laughs> Tom Cruise be, though? I mean, like Daniel. <laughs> Daniel's got better hair. Definitely got better hair than Tom Cruise. Oh yeah, way better. He does. Okay, everybody, uh, it's going to be quick, but we're going to hit the road and uh, talk about the games that we're playing this week. Lauren? I know, I feel, I feel bad because uh, this being the sort of final weekly episode, I feel like, especially this being the end of the final weekly episode, that was a powerful segment we just recorded and so important uh, to me and will always be one of my favorite memories on the show. I know, and now it's like, time to feel like it down going, like a dog in the road. I feel like we're going out with a bit of a whimper, but uh, as far as the road is concerned, the only game I've played this week is Battlefield 4, uh, and uh, it's been a shit ton of fun. So I can't really go into that, Brent. I will tell you, I did pick up uh, Tomb Raider. Yeah. Um, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider comes out this coming week on Thursday. Yeah. Um, I picked it up for like 37 bucks. I bought one of the NVIDIA codes. Uh, I got shit uh-huh. from listeners for pre-ordering the game, uh, at which time I was like, God damn it, I didn't realize I pre-ordered it. But there is, uh, t- in my defense, the game is already out, and so I did. I went and like watched a lot of gameplay and reviews and stuff, and that's how I made the decision. Um, and uh, it has, I think, an 86 on Open Critic. Uh, so super excited to check that out this week. But uh, other than that, I've just been playing BF4. Well, I'm going to be checking out The Witness this week because that, uh, that's, that's down tomorrow. Yeah, and uh, the the reviews are the reviews are pretty good uh, over on Open Critic. Uh, God damn it, we might just have to do a show next week and just talk about the two awesome games we just bought. Lots of uh, lots of people seem to be enjoying that, and that's uh, and the the month ain't over yet. Uh, so we got that, and then we got Tomb Raider, and then you got XCOM, and then you got Firewatch. It's gonna it's actually a pretty good couple of weeks that we're about to. Hit yeah, on and here. also the expansion to uh, Dying Light, which looks fucking dope. That's and true. Dying Light was tons of fun. So. Uh, yeah, I have not played anything with Star Wars Commander, but that is largely because of the fact that I've been out of town, uh, since the day after we recorded the last episode and yesterday. So I really haven't been home to play anything, but, uh, Star Wars Commander, I mean, it's always fun to play on the road. I actually, I let my nephew, uh, I let my nephew, Nate, uh, play, uh, play the game and, um, 
he he nearly spent like all the crystals that it's taking me like however however long the game's been out like nine ten months whatever it is all the crystals that I have like slowly saved up over that time he just about spent them all in one fell swoop. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, fortunately that that crisis was was averted. But anyway, again, not too much to talk about. Just uh, playing Star Wars Commander again with uh, with some of the OGs in the uh, the Epic Outlaws Imperial Squad. Uh, so I guess let's go ahead and go into the sunset since we don't really have all that much else to say. Yep. So uh, for into the sunset this week, Brent, you got some great news that you're going to tell us about. I am um, about a friend of the show here, but uh, I just stumbled upon this video that I thought was just fucking awesome. And I'm constantly amazed by video games and what they can do. And some brilliant person out there put together the trailer for the Wolf of Wall Street using uh, GTA, nice. uh, GTA Five. And it is dope. You guys should check out this video. This is a side by side comparison. There's also a video of just just looking at the GTA recreation, but it's uh it, it's pretty awesome. And I just watch it. And just, it's kind of like you know when you if you remember when we saw the Red Dead Redemption and they uh, took the cutscenes out and made a little movie. Uh, how amazing that was! I kind of watched this and I was like, God damn, this is just people are so creative and games are so cool. So uh, it's a little video of the Wolf of Wall Street recreated in GTA Five. Oh yeah. All right, something a little playful to go out with. And then you've got some good news as Dude, well. Dude, I've got some fucking great news, and, and I've actually been sitting on this for a while because, uh, you know, just it's not my news to share, and, and Daniel wanted to, to... But you're going to anyway. Yes, well, I mean, now that now that he's, he's put it out there, but I I, uh, I met with Daniel uh, last Tuesday. We got together and had a beer and, uh, you know, just were talking and catching up and stuff, and it was just before he was moving away because uh, he is moving away to start his new job as the, get ready for it, Product marketing manager for fucking Unreal Engine at Epic Games, and so uh, he's moved over to Raleigh, North Carolina, to uh, to join all of the amazing people at Epic Games working on the Unreal team. He joins another uh, another good friend of mine, Chance Ivy, who is a senior community manager over at uh, at Epic, and uh, I just couldn't be happier for the guy, man. He uh, he, he he totally deserves it. I think he's going to do a fantastic job, and uh, and I'm just uh, I'm so happy that. Uh, after you know GT folding and and all of the uh, all of the stuff that 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 he went through and you know just that uh, that that really unfortunate situation it's it's great that uh, he's back uh, he's back at the helm of something really uh, really cool and and in a job that he's just going to kick ass at so uh, yeah. we just want to say all the best uh, the mightiest of congratulations to uh, to DK for uh, for this uh, new career path that he's uh, started on. Absolutely, and an epic note to uh, end this episode fifty, the last of the weekly podcasts uh, for Outlaw Gamer Radio, but not the last of the podcast. Congratulations to you, Daniel. By the way, um, and with that, Brent, I think we will wrap it up. Uh, as usual, we want to hear what you guys think about everything we talked about on this podcast or anything to do with the world of gaming. Uh, whether it's DK's new position as a product marketing manager for Unreal Engine, you better. Send a shout out to DK over whatever social media you can. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street trader, uh, trailer created in GTA 5. Of course, Star Wars Commander and BF4. That's just a perennial goddamn subject. Uh, any more thoughts you have to share on, on what community means to you, what this uh, website means to you, that sort of thing, please, please do share them. We want you guys to uh, go ahead and process any feelings you got, share your love for the community and each other. And then up in the garage, we talked about, of course, the new Nintendo NX Portable and Console, rumored to be coming in 2016 and 17. Republic coming on the PS4. Uh, Lord X's amazing series of me kicking Brent's ass or Brent kicking my ass in the ring, along with Daniel the Hair Kaiser and Tony Grice, uh, and all of the uh, stories we talked about relative to uh, the advent of VR in 2016. We want to hear your thoughts on that and any topic in gaming, as I said, as usual. He is Brent Adams. I am Lauren Baumgarten. And remember, you don't stop playing because you get old. You get old because you stop playing. <laughs>